the most common time to buy a new car in the UK apparently is a Monday in late autumn or early winter. Now I agree to buy mine on a Thursday in spring, so not really going with the average there. However, it's not a new car, but it is new to me and it is new to the UK. So this is the reveal of my new projects on the channel. Let's have a look. You've all seen the thumbnail, so I'm assuming at least some of you out there will know exactly what it is that I've bought from the details and the text that I've got in the thumbnail. However, if you still haven't worked it out, it's a Ford. It's painted in cologne blue. It has a matching blue vegan leather interior with obviously black dashboard, black carpet, and your normal creamish white headlining. And it's a South African car. It was imported um, a couple of months ago, and I bought it off the gentleman that imported it. At the moment, I can't take it out, so I can't do a sort of a drive around with it and reveal it to you somewhere exotic, as or as exotic as you can get in Northumberland, uh, purely because it's not exactly registered at the moment. It doesn't have a logbook. It doesn't have a registration plate on it. Uh, I'm waiting for those to come back from the DVLA. Once they arrive, I'll get the plates made and uh, I can get the car on the road and we can go for a drive and see exactly what it performs like. It does drive, it starts brilliantly, it drives. It was delivered yesterday. Now I would have done a video of the delivery wagon coming round the corner into the estate that I live in and getting the car off and driving it into the, into the driveway, etc. However, it arrived in the middle of a thunderstorm. Not ideal really for filming and uh, not ideal for being outside. I did end up, well me and my mate that was here, ended up being soaked through just by hanging around getting the car off the trailer and getting it into the driveway. So I didn't get any footage of that yesterday. It made the journey up here safely. Uh, it got here. The majority of stuff on the car does work. There are one or two things that don't work, uh, which obviously we'll, we'll get attended to and we'll look at. And there's one or two uh, blemishes on the bodywork that need looking at. But apart from that, it's a car I've been looking for for a number of years and I finally managed to found one, find one that was affordable. So without any further ado, as they say on all YouTube channels, Let's go have a look at it outside and uh, I'll give you a few clues as to what it could be and then I'll show you exactly what it is. Come on. Now I don't know if any of this will give way what it is. Obviously space there for the number plate. Now I'm guessing this particular wheel isn't going to be of any benefit to you at all in trying to work out what it is. Uh, this is a TSW wheel and they are only for sale in South Africa according to what I found on the internet. They're a 14 inch rim on 18570 tyres. Now I'm not sure if these are factory seats or not. They're in fairly reasonable condition, complete with headrests. And obviously some splits in the upholstery as you expect in a car of this age. But I've no idea if these are the factory seats or not. The design of the upholstery does match identical to the rear seat upholstery so I'm fairly certain they're in the car from new or at least if these are different to the car and they're foreign to the car whoever in South Africa fitted these has gone to the trouble of fitting a complete back seat as well but uh, let us know in the comments if these are original factory seats they're obviously staying in the car and they're a lovely blue to match the exterior and of course they are vegan leather which makes them excruciatingly warm in this temperature we'll have today it's not that warm outside but it's boiling in the car any ideas yet? Leave a comment below, comment on it now, pause the video, comment on it now, let us know what you think the car is, and I'll give you some more clues in the meantime. Again, it's not registered yet, so there's the front valance. Obviously the space for the number plate when it gets here. So that might give you an idea of what it is. Now the centre section of the radiator grille looks like that. There's no badges on the grille to indicate what kind of car it is or where it or what model it is and finally there's one of the headlights so if you've got any ideas what it is pause the video comment below let me know what you think it is and then the next few seconds when i reveal the entire car we'll see if you are right for those that did work out what it is well done for those of you that didn't here it is a mark 3 cortina now this particular model, being South African, it's the Mark III Cortina Big Six. It's the two and a half litre, and it's got the Essex V6 engine in it. 
and for being the age that it is, it's an amazing condition. There are faults with it, but you'd expect there to be faults with it. There's the full view from the rear. And if we just home in on that lovely badge there, it's very faded, so I think you can just about make out. It says that it's a big six. Now down this side, it's all very straight for where it is. You can just make out how straight it is down the side there. There are a few blemishes, a few blisters coming through. You'd expect that. There's a little bit there. I think over the top of the arch, there's a bit popping through just bottom of the door there. Door's a bit scuffed. And there is a scuff and a dent there in the back door. Now that damage occurred on the over from South Africa when it was in the container. So that needs looking at and taken care of. Sills are all nice and solid by the looks of it. Front wing suffered a little bit more than the rest of the car. There's a bit of a blemish in the bottom of the wing there, which is obviously completely normal for Cortinas, and especially cars of this age. And there's a bit of rot on the top of the wing there as well, but that's all easy enough to take care of. It also carries on down inside there, which I'll show you in a minute. Now there's also, you can't see it in a minute for the bushes, but there is a couple of dents in the front valance under the bumper that need taken care of. They've been there for God knows how long, probably the previous owner rubbed up against something over there in South Africa. And then down on the uh, the captain's side, as you can see, it's also really straight and solid down the captain's side. There's a little bit of rot coming through on the captain's door, just there, which should be easy enough to take care of. And a couple more blemishes along the bottom of the door. But again, the sill on this side is nice and solid. I've got some photos of the underneath, which I'll flag up here, so you can uh, you can have a look and see what it's like underneath. It is an amazingly solid car. And there's one more bit of damage that occurred on the way over in the container. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in the sunlight. But the front of the bonnet there, apparently the car rolled forward in the container. It's put a dent in the front of the bonnet, which has flattened it out a little bit. But we're not going to be concerned about that. It hasn't done any major damage to the front of the car. The radiator grill, albeit one of the black plastic ones, is all in good condition. Obviously the bumpers are in great condition. But then it has spent its life in South Africa where they don't get as much salt and water as we do. Now as is traditional, we'll start with the reveal in the boot. Now, it looks like the boot lock does work, but it looks like the face plate is missing. So the little chrome piece that goes over the top of the lock mechanism is missing. But it does work, opens quite freely. And as you can see, I think this must be original carpeting. So I've got the nice big boot. We do have a spare dipstick. That could be interesting. Obviously there's the original jack, original wheel brace. And if we pull this back, it's all solid where it needs to be. A lot of this carpet is glued down, so I can't pull a lot of it back. But look at the side where it needs to be. There is a bit of a water ingress there, but that's probably through the back light. So the boot seal, I would imagine, will get that dried up and get that taken care of and we'll find out what's causing that to come in there. But it's only in that corner. To be honest, the amount of rain we had last night, I'm not really surprised it's leaked in from somewhere. So there's a, a light switch there or something I'm assuming at some point was a boot light or an interior light in the boot. But as you can see, the majority of it is nice and solid in here. Now moving on to the interior, we do have some sun damage to the dashboard top. It's not burnt through, but it is crispy. So something else there to take care of. Now this particular model, it's a later model, so it does have the facelifted Mark IV, Mark V dashboard. No wood trim, just uh, basic black. Obviously no radio, a couple of blanking plates here where there would be switches on one of the higher models. We do have the lovely boomerang Searing wheel, that's still in. Uh, elliptical, I think it is. And of course the gauges are in kilometres. Now according to the odometer, if it's working correctly, this has done 90,000 kilometres in, uh, in its 48 or 49 years of life. That works out at around about 55,000 miles. 
Now, I don't know if that's going to be genuine or not. It could have gone round. It could be 155,000 miles, and therefore that would be 190,000 kilometres. But judging by the overall condition of the car, there's a pretty good chance that it could be a genuine 55,000 miles, which would be really nice if it is. Now, as I said, the uh, the interior matches the uh, the exterior. So we've got the cologne blue paintwork outside, and we've got this darker blue. I don't know if there's a a name for this car or not, there probably is, I'm not aware of it, but we've got the darker blue on the uh, on the door cards, and obviously these lovely seats complete with headrests, uh, not altogether sure whether they're original or not, let us know in the comments below if uh, if you know that these are original to South African cars, and then as I said, the back seat, no damage to it, a little bit of sunburn to the top of the back seat in front of the parcel shelf, the back seat itself though, no damage there, no splits, no tears that I can see. Uh, the person that I bought it off did give me one or two extra bits and pieces as a dashboard top and a couple of centre consoles, so we can uh, see if we can get those fitted. The headlining is in great condition. There's no splits, there's no tears, it's not sagging. A few stains around by the back door there. I don't know if that's going to come up on camera or not, uh, but that's to be expected. Uh, all the grab handles are in place. So it's, uh, oh, and it's also an automatic, which was perfect. And uh, I think that's about it for the interior. Notice that the windscreen does have a bit of delamination going on there or a bit of fading going on there. So something to be uh, wary of and maybe look at getting a new screen at some point in the future. But for now though, it's perfectly drivable as it is. We've got our original sun visors, a few stains on the headlining under there. I'm being a little bit wary when I'm moving things around on the interior because <laughs> with it being an imported car, I hope there's no nasty insects kicking about anywhere in it. Courtesy light lens is missing, but the bulb's there, which doesn't seem to work. Right, let's go and have a look under the bonnet. Yeah, so being the South African Cortina Big Six, it does have the Essex V6 engine installed. This is the 2.5 litre, so it's um, it's not the big one, it's not the three, it's the 2.5. Probably going to be powerful enough for now to get around. Uh, there's no damage over there rust-wise on the top of the leading into the bulkhead. Everything seems to be okay around by the uh, the heater boxes. Well, that seems okay. There is a bit of damage up there on that wing. So that's going to need taken care of. But then there is damage to the top of the wing by the windscreen anyway. So that's easy uh, to be repaired and taken care of. For some reason, this chassis leg here, although showing a bit of surface rust, it seems to have some bare metal showing in places. And the weird thing is, this one here, also has been taken down to bare metal for some strange reason. Now, the person that I bought it off did say that of the multitude of Cortinas that he's imported from South Africa, a lot of them do seem to come in with the chassis legs bare metal for some reason. Now, there's no number stamped in there, as far as I can see, and nothing's been stamped in there from South Africa, so no idea why they do that, but obviously the most important thing at the moment, get all this genuine South African dust or sand out of here and get both those chassis legs painted with something to protect them whilst we're busy learning about the car and driving around in the car. Uh, complete battery in there. Obviously, the original radiator in there, I believe. Uh, the weird thing is, this alternator, although it's there, when you close the bonnet, there's actually been a gap cut through the strength in, in the bonnet. And when you put your hands on it, it looks rough from here, but that's just flaky paint. When you put your hands on it, it's actually been done very well and it's really, really smooth, and there's no chance of cutting your fingers anywhere on that, as you can see. Dirty, but really smooth. So when the bonnet comes down, this part of the alternator seems to sit inside that gap in the bonnet. So I don't know if this is an original alternator, uh, or if it's just in the wrong position, and it could do with being lowered. Maybe just have this extended and lower that down a little bit. But for now, it's absolutely fine. The bonnet shuts fine. It doesn't seem to have done any problems with the, uh, the structure of the overall bonnet. And then looking down there, uh, that's the water pump, which did confuse me when I saw when I first saw the car, because obviously I haven't had much to do with Essex V6s, and I'm used to the water pumps being here behind the fan, not down there on the side of the engine. And we've got a lot of miscellaneous wiring going on. Uh, there's some wiring down there, and there's a bulb sitting here. Now, it doesn't seem to work with any of the switches in the car. At the moment, I'm not sure if it's an indicator bulb or some form of side light bulb, so I don't really know that what that is. As for the things that are working on the car, the windscreen wipers work. Wind, windscreen washers don't work at the minute. Uh, there's no sound coming from the washer motor, so I need to investigate that 
The headlights work, indicators at the front don't work, indicators at the back don't work, there's no hazard lights. The horn doesn't work, although there is one fitted. And the tail lights do come on, but because I'm on my own, I've got no way of checking to see if the brake lights work when you put your foot on the brake. There's also been fitted at some point, if you can see through the radiator grill there, there is an electric fan in there. Now, who has fitted that? They've wired that up so that it actually comes on as soon as you put the key in the ignition and turn the ignition on. So I'll probably be putting a switch on there. I don't know if that's just a sensible addition because of the temperatures I was driving around in in South Africa or if there's a potential problem with the car overheating and they've put a permanent running fan on to try and keep the car cool while they're driving around. We'll find that out sooner or later, I would have thought. It does also come with its original South African number plate. So that'll go on the wall in the garage. And I think that's uh, pretty much it. All four doors open, all four doors lock. Uh, it starts and drives beautifully. Let's see if we can get it fired up after it's been sitting for a couple of days. So you can hear it. Sadly, I can't take it out anywhere. Oh, and it does need four tyres. Um, the tyres have got a bit of age showing according to the date code on them and that back one there. Although, if you can possibly see, I don't know if you can see when we're that far away, but if we get over to here, you know, look down here, there's, there's very little tread on that edge. In fact, that's really smooth. So we do need a set of tyres to go on there as soon as we uh, get ready to take that out on the road. Let's see if it'll start though, let you hear what it, uh, what it sounds like. Okay, so first start on camera. Now it's been sitting overnight and there was a lot of rain last night. So uh, let's get the key in the ignition. Now yesterday when I started it, and there's the fan kicking in, hope you can hear that. Now yesterday when I started it, I didn't pump the throttle at all, just turned it over. And there we go, straight away, that was no touch on the pedals at all. We've got the red ignition light on. Which goes off with a bit of a rev. So, choke's obviously working. Let's pop outside, and you can see what it looks like with it running under the bonnet. Does look awfully loose. Well, that belt does look awfully loose. That's probably why the ignition light was on, so we'll, uh, we'll turn it off before that decides to leave the engine with a car altogether. There we are, that's better. Now, yeah, that's uh, going to want to tighten up. Belt itself looks alright. I probably would imagine it'd be worth buying a belt for it and putting a new belt on. Let's we'll see if we can get, maybe get a slightly smaller one because that looks to be at its full travel on where that alternator is, or maybe we can get a larger one and alter that link and uh, move the alternator down a little bit. But certainly everything seems to run okay. There's no major leaks from the engine that I can tell. There's a couple of puddles down in there of oil, but then what car do of this age doesn't leak. I haven't checked any of the fluids yet. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So there we are, the new channel project. Is my Mark III Cortina Big Six 2.5 litre V6 automatic. So now you've seen the new project. If you want to keep up to date with what's going on with it and all the work we'll have to do on it, as well as the work that we enjoy doing on it and all the fun we're going to have with it, places we're going to be travelling, don't forget to subscribe. Hit like if you enjoyed this video and you enjoyed the way I revealed it. Uh, leave comments below if you're interested in. Uh, and knowing anything about the car or if you have any information you can help us with with regards to these South African V6s because I know very little about them obviously I know a fair bit about Cortinas but I know very little about the SX V6 engine indeed this is the first SX V6 engine I've had to fiddle about with or running around with one powering one of my cars so thanks for watching guys uh, I'll leave a link up here to something I think you might enjoy watching next and I'll see you over there and uh, thanks for watching this one. We'll see you in the next one. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.